DS Complex, Hardest Challenge on YouTube. We got the No Jumper Suicide Boys interview from like way back 2015. This is like in December 2015. I don't know if I'm gonna split this up in the parts or I'm gonna just let the whole entire video ride. I mean, the podcast itself is like an hour and a half. I'll make the screen bigger, make it a little more watchable. Let's not waste too much time, let's get it going. We were up until like six in the morning with some fucking ratchets. Uh, now we're going to the Puya Suicide Boys show. Yeah, right now we need some street beers. Yeah, doggy, I got a road soda it's right It's like now. we're in fucking Barcelona. <laughs> And then we're going to show. Hey, we're live. Hey, we're live. This hey, is NoJumper.com. This with is peak No Jumper up, right here. Cigarettes on deck, and we got Jerm as my co-host. It's like a dream come true. Jerm. Never thought. Well, maybe not until like 2017, 2018. Chilling, bro. Yeah. What? What? This is your first ever interview. Yeah. It's very exciting. Fire. So very exciting. First ever. Who's who? Yeah. What? Jerm. Never thought this was possible. How you guys doing? That's Jerm. And we got Jerm as my co-host. It's like a dream come true. Jerm. Never thought this was possible. How you guys doing? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Chilling, bro. Yeah. What? What? This is your first ever interview. Oh, yeah. that's Jay Very Green on the right. Fires. Fires. Very excited. First ever. I'm nervous as shit. Really? A little bit. What's the medication status? Like, what have you guys been doing today uh, in terms of pharmaceuticals or other? Absolutely nothing. Nothing? Yeah. Sober? Well, I mean, I've been I waiting can't. on shit, but yeah, sober. Sober as a, yeah. Uh, let's see. Klonopin, <laughs> um, a little marijuana. Yeah. yeah. I smoke a little weed, but. And, uh. My Suboxone. What's that? Suboxone is like a maintenance. Okay. You know, it's like... It's a day-to-day people, antidepressant or people, something? No, no, it's people that have like opiate addiction. I've, okay. struggled, I, I've struggled with opiate addiction for like, since I was 17. Okay. For a long ass time. And so how'd you get into that? Um, basically just fucking, um, long story short, my grandfather died. Somebody gave me a Vicodin. Uh-huh. You know, before that, I was, like, completely straight edge. Like, never fucked around with anything. Right. Somebody gave me the Vicodin. And after I felt how that felt, I just, like, took off running. Damn. Right. Over the years, you know, it just progresses. So you know? when, when you were young, did you have any idea of, like, what you might be getting into in terms of doing pills? Do you consider this, like, a big mistake that you made at a certain point? He's good at masking it. Absolutely. I'll say but, that. It's a mistake because it's like he he's seen it like I, I just I've tried so many times to get off of it. Right. And it's just like it, it, it's it's a battle. You keep trying to fight all the time and you keep fucking losing, you know, because it's real hard. Right. But at the time when I was young, you know, like all my role models were like Wayne and shit like right, that. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he was sipping lean heavy. So I started sipping lean heavy. And, and it's just, crazy when you see a lot of that stuff because you wonder how much of an effect it has on kids because I know that that shit could have an effect on me. Like. All right. When Future said dirty. It's crazy because people try to say that the celebrities don't have an effect on it. So I completely disagree. Foam, I think take a day to get my mind do. blown. Okay. He influenced me to do drugs right there. Right, like that right, day, right, I was right. like, damn, I got to get something. I got to take a day Dude, off. <laughs> real shit. I, yeah. mean, pe- I mean, people that say that, I, I, I don't know, man. It influenced me. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got a fucking fear God tattoo on me across my chest just because he had it on his eyelids. You know what I'm saying? He right. Was, okay. You know, he was sipping yeah. a lean. He was doing all the drugs. Fuck. I, I did it too. So. Yeah. Heavy influence on me with the drug. Was Wayne a huge influence on you as well? To a certain extent. Yeah. Not as much as him, but to a certain extent. Right. Well, do you remember what the first Wayne uh, album or song that really like, hit yes. you was? Yes. What was it? The Block is Hot. The Block is Hot. That yeah. was my fucking record as we're well. From, we're from New Orleans. Like, we, we yeah. were raised on that shit. Yeah. Dude, yeah. You know what my moment was? Was when I was in fucking probably like eighth grade or some shit. I was in the computer lab. No, I think I might have been 10th grade. So I was like, I walk in and I just see a CD sitting there and it's a fucking Wu Tang CD. And I pick it up and it's the W, which is like the, the first whack Wu Tang album because yeah. they, the, it was the third album and it was whack. Right. I open it up and it's fucking Lil Wayne. The block is hot. <laughs> so I took that as like a real message, especially because I was in fucking New Hampshire, New England. Like motherfuckers don't listen to Lil Wayne out there right. back then. You know, this is very rare. Right. And it blew my mind and I took it home and listened to it and even though at the time like wayne was not what he would then develop into being right. i was still like, really from? taken aback by it and i think that that's why like from a young age i was kind of more it's also influenced like, by like southern 12, rap 13, it's also, yeah, yeah man. that back then i think block is hot i think he was like 15 i think i think that's 14, probably about maybe. it 15 yeah. so he that's always a, lied about his age and shit too you well, know he true, started off and he was like they have a, a bg album called true story i think right and he's on there as like it's kind of like a bounce beat it's like you a bounce know, yeah, yeah, He's yeah, yeah. on there at like age 11. Right. Very rare shit. He kills it. He kills yeah. it. Like talking shit. shit to PNC like at age 11. Hey, do you remember when you first saw the Juvenile Ha video? 
Yes. Because that to me was a huge thing too that just made me realize how amazing Cash Money was like real young. I saw the Back That Ass Up video before I saw the Ha video. Yo. Yeah. Back Sorry. That Ass Up. Because that song like you can't even explain how fucking big that song like was the at New the Orleans time. anthem like forever. That it. song is like one of the greatest songs of a generation. I feel, I, I completely like, agree because it's like the kind of song you still hear now it doesn't annoy you. You're still like Yo, yeah, that, that is legit. Man. That's crazy because this is like I mean I wouldn't say this is right before my time but I mean Back when Lil Wayne was like seriously in his prime, I was like maybe <clears throat> like seven, eight. So I wasn't like too I, crazy I, into it. At a it. teenage party or you drop yeah. it uh, at a, at a 60 year old, you know, yeah. like uh, get together reunion and everybody's going to be getting down to it, bro. Yeah. So like because as a result of the fact that you guys have never really done interviews, I didn't really know where you guys were from. I was trying to figure it out figure and kind of having a, a tough time figuring What'd it out. What'd you guess? Seventh Ward. Well, you're always saying I was smart. So I thought maybe from Memphis or something. No, no a lot New of people Orleans. think that though. New Orleans. Okay. New yeah, Orleans. yeah. So, yeah. so, so tell me about growing up as white kids Memphis in New Orleans. Like makes sense. At what point? did you become obsessed with rap music and very early like what age like i was like eight right because it was the first music you listened to right, right? that's the right. boat i'm in too it was mm -hmm. like snoop dogg and actually shit. he i like i said i guess i kind of got into it through lil wayne and like juvenile and then he would show me all the other shit like uh fifth ward weeby and pnc and all that kind like of shit. local local shit that right. was hot but my first i first got introduced to it uh, from Gangsta's Paradise, Coolio. Okay, first, yeah, I was huge on that when I was yeah, a kid yeah. too. My yeah. pops, my pops bought me that, but I could only they'd only buy me the edited version. Okay, yeah. at the time. That's crazy because Coolio at the time, like now you look at him, he's like so silly, but he seemed kind of hard at the time. Oh, man. Dude, what? Man. Anybody wearing a blue flannel with the braids twisted up, you were looking that at him like, goofy as hell, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I might kill somebody. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I grew up like super scared of like gang culture because it just seemed so crazy on the other side of the country, you know? <laughs> what, um, so, so what... From an early age, did you feel like accepted in listening to rap music or did, did you want to rap right well, away? Here's, here's the thing, like... I grew up, I grew up on, they got this place, the West Bank. Um, it's like, you cross the river, there's a G&O. Okay. Um, you cross the Mississippi River, and it's considered like the West Bank of New Orleans. Okay. I mean, where I grew up at, um, you know, it was mixed. Uh -huh. had, but, I mean, we would, uh, white people were the minority. Right. So, I grew up with pretty much all black friends, you know. So, I mean, I, I the whole... Yeah. Like dancing, Scream nervous, I mean, ain't he? playing basketball, you know right. what I'm saying? Typical stereotypes that black Swear people carry. You know, I had all of them too. So I mean, that that's how I grew up in New Orleans with um with with that whole scene. So is know? it fair to say that you guys both didn't yeah, really grow up in like the best area? Um, he grew up on the West Bank. I grew up on I grew up in like like East close Bank. to I grew up in the East Bank which is like New Orleans okay I grew up like around Fat City which uh -huh. was like super sketchy right like my neighborhood was like the first kind of good neighborhood and the Fat City was like where all like the drugs and all that yeah, shit yeah it's, it's always kind of weird because it's a checkerboard like you have yeah, like it's a street away bad like, area good area right, bad yeah. area good yeah, one yeah, street right. is like really good just take one wrong turn and a lot right. of people don't understand that because they want to pigeonhole everywhere people live like oh that's a white area that's a black yeah, area that's a good area that's a bad area yeah it, but it's like, not like that in most mixes. places yeah it's weird right. not over there like the same place where it might be like super rich like literally a block away is like ghetto as fuck do you guys feel like you run into like the stereotypes of people thinking that you're soft or that you come from like a different kind of upbringing because you're white uh they can fuck themselves if they do. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I haven't. We haven't really like. I hate that shit. We ran really, into anybody yeah, I really that's ran like, into like you know any shit before. Like, right. like, low key people, I mean, a lot of people that listen to us probably don't even think we're white. You know, yeah, actually, yeah, we've yeah. gotten that a lot. People would be like, "Oh my god, these guys are white." Right. And it's like, why does it fucking matter? Do you like, feel like it's not that big a deal to be a white rapper in 2015? I mean, I get the cliche and shit, but like, I just so happen to be white and rap. So. Can you grab the door? I think Bay's here. Uh. You know yeah, you just it's just a coincidence. You know, uh, that's kind of crazy because that's changed a lot over the years. You know, yeah. it has. Oh, shit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, to answer your question earlier, just to tie in, like when you said when we first started listening to Cash Money, did we like look it up to good them? right here? Yeah, though. I did. Yeah, like, I wanted to be Lil Wayne when I was seven. Like I was like, but I also felt weird in my own skin because I wasn't that. You know, right. what I mean? I wasn't from the project. So to kind of come full circle is kind of tight. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you like at, at what point did you guys meet and did you start? He's my cousin. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 People his, wanted to know if you were really cousins. Here, all right, yeah. Here, here's that. My mom here's is that his final mom. answer. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. They're sisters. Our mom's from the gutter, like of New Orleans. Yeah. So like, we're I was born a year before him. Yeah. So I mean, from diapers, we've uh -huh. come up together. And how old are you guys right now? I'm 26. Okay. 300. 300. <laughs> you <gonna laughs> drop that on us? That's dope. 26, 2015. Yeah, they literally got 10 years on me. Um. 
All right, so, but what about from, like, a music standpoint? Like, at what point did you realize, like, oh, I'm going to be rapping with my cousin? Well, the thing is, I started playing music at, like, seven. Okay. So I didn't, I never really wanted to try the rap shit because uh-huh. I was always kind of scared to and, like, what do people think and blah, 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 blah. Right. And he was doing the DJ shit. Uh, we actually didn't link up till like, literally a year or two ago to do oh, this shit. Right really? I, was trying, oh, I was doing punk shit for, like, ten years. And he was Can like, I pause the damn video? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll say this real quick, man. Don't give a fuck about what people think. You know what I'm saying? It's such a hindrance. He's doing like making, making beats and DJing and shit. Okay, man. so I've seen YouTube comments about that. So you're saying you know that you were in a punk band and shit like that. Yeah, so I was in a bunch, yeah. In your opinion, is that contradictory at all or is it just an overall love of music? What you mean? Like, I feel like a lot of people might look at a dude who was rapping and he used to be in a punk band or some shit and be like, oh, like, that's kind of weak. Like, that means you're a fucking poser or whatever, no, which like, I completely disagree with right. for the record. Well, I don't look at it like that. Like, I was always into rap as well. I think uh-huh. the whole underground thing, bro, everything's thing, just yeah. like, it, it kind of meshes it. If you right. go to a, so many punk elements. One of our shows or anybody in the underground show, right. it's the same thing as a punk show. Like, right. the pits and the energy, everything. It's yeah. the same thing. And that's what drew, drew me to this. Right. And the whole punk thing, like I said, man, I did that shit for 10 years. I didn't go anywhere with it. Mm-hmm. I started rapping for like a year or two and, and you know, kind of took off. So. so what were you doing in the band? Playing guitar or something? I, I, I played drums, dude, guitar, play bass, sang. Yeah. But did you have any uh, success in that regard or was no, it just kind of whatever? I mean, I toured twice with this band, but like I never saw anything Just never went it. nowhere. Nobody, nobody would ever like nobody put that effort in that he was putting effort yeah, in. Right. You know? yeah. He was going hard with it. He was running it. To, to drag like three other people with me, you know what I mean? Like right. they would always oh, yeah. want to get fucked up. Having or, a band in general seems like just such a really fucking hard. nightmare because you got to get all these people to do the all the same, same page, things, yeah. and no, yeah. nobody is on the same page all the time. Nobody, like, even two guys. Is a I challenge, mean, we I'm butt sure. heads. We, right. butt, we definitely yeah. butt heads. But the thing is, nobody, as far as the punk aspect goes, nobody wants to do like the shit that's not music, which is like booking stuff and right. making merch the and all business that stuff. stuff. And that's what's crazy about punk versus. Yeah, especially whenever you're like coming up and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta wear every single hat. You don't have a whole team to it's do hip-hop stuff. Is for you. In rap, it's like accepted. Like you want right. to make money, you want to do well because most of the people who do it are from a background where they actually need to right. improve their situation. Whereas in punk rock in 2015, maybe not in the 70s or the 80s. People aren't maybe hungry th- anymore. Like right. the 70s and 80s, especially with like in the 80s with the the Reagan era, like right. the depressions and shit. Like that was a time and place for it to happen, and kids were pissed off and wanted to say something about it. Nowadays, I feel like. People are too comfortable. People are too relaxed. People just, right. there's nothing for them to stand up for anymore. Right. Like, that's why I think why punk is kind of dying. Like, Just from the little bit I've seen, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I've gone to a couple of shows of his when he was still playing in the band. But it's like, it's it's a bunch of actually like white privileged kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, like that act class, really gutter. And I they think want, it's a, a, always been like that in a yeah. lot of ways. It still is you like that. Because you want to be rocking these leather jackets and having nice guitars and all this shit. It's like, you have to have some money to uh, do that. I mean, I knew kids call that white privilege, their dads though. were doctors and they would go buy leather right, jackets I mean, and right. then like stomp on them with their dad's car to make them look tight. Like, yeah, man. You know, yeah. yeah. But so, give me a couple of punk bands that you still love that if you were going to listen to some punk oh, right now, what you would fuck with. Shit. Uh, like current punk bands? Or no, just, just bands? anything of all time. Uh, Spotify. Misfits is probably my number one, man. I mean, not like True. fuck Glenn Danzig. Fuck you, Glenn right. Danzig, but like Misfits. Early <laughs> era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Minor Threat, Choking Victim. Love Minor Left Threat. Cra- Leftover Crack is a huge influence for me. For Yo, same. I listen to Choking Victim like crazy in that's high school That's one of my favorite shit. fucking bands ever. Choking Victim. Leftover Crack? Yeah, yeah, Left, that's Left, been that's yeah. been a huge. But choking victim was the original name, yeah, right? Choking and victim then was they, before like, the crack, right. and that was like Mad Ska influence too, mm-hmm. which a lot of kids like definitely don't know crack about rock that. Steady shit, yeah, yeah, dude. Oh man, I'm gonna listen to that on the way we home. Can, right uh, we can nerd out to that later, yeah. Yo, that shit was sick. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. But so, so tell me, like, you were the DJ early on? Yeah, I started. I started DJing at like 13. DJ My screen. parents had got me for Christmas. <laughs> the they got me like. <laughs> I don't know, man. It was basically like two CD players and, and like a mixer. I mean, you couldn't even like scratch. You couldn't even like really mix the shit besides that just like crossing over and fading into the next song. Right. But I, I got into DJing and then I just like, I don't know, through uh, doing parties and stuff like that. And as I got older, like got in the college scene, I got booked to be like a house DJ at certain clubs. And then... I got into hosting mixtapes. Oh, okay. You know, like the whole DJ drama, like that Don type Cannon, of hosting. All the, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like with the tags all yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It back. Sure. I got into that and um, Chopper City from making a band. Right. Yeah. He he had uh, reached out to me and I linked up really? with him and I thought I hit the jackpot. And this is post time. making the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah post yeah. making a band. He wasn't shit. You know. What yeah. I'm saying? But <laughs> it, in my mind, I was like, holy shit. And it so was I was all downhill I, from there. Yeah, I was I was working a little bit with him and doing that shit, and um, he fucked him out of some money. Yeah, he really. Was, 
he was fucking me over. Not like, he, was, he was a bum. He was a bum. Like, yeah, he, he he was a bum. Germ kind of looks like him. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Looking ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, and then um, and then when I was nineteen, um, I was dude for some reason I was super into like T Pain. Okay. You know, and uh, I was watching an interview on him, and in the interview he talked about how he made the whole rapper turn sang album on garage band really like vocals oh, wow. i mean auto tune the beats everything. everything so literally that night i went out and you know fucking i was selling pills and selling drugs and i had the money to go below so i went and bought me a laptop uh-huh. came home and made you know my first little fucking shitty beat and shit like that yeah and shit. just kept making beats from there you know and then um Local motherfuckers would fuck with me, and I would just try to get everybody's email in the industry that I could, and just fucking in the New Orleans industry, and and in the overall. Oh, so industry. you were going and oh, traveling man, a bit was, back then I too. I wasn't traveling, but I was just like emailing, like spamming people with beats. I know this is kind of unrelated, but it's nice to see like Adam hungry. You know what I'm saying? That you can tell he's definitely invested in this versus now in 2024. <laughs> he's just like extremely nonchalant now with it's these right, podcasts. And then uh so you don't be caring hustle as well as a real life hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But aside from that, you know, I was working a nine to five too. So Doing well. I was uh, selling furniture, selling used furniture. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds depressing. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> mean, it, it was all right, bro. It was all right. I, I was, I was pretty good at. It. I got a little mouthpiece on. First time hearing that. Fired. He only got fired because of his tattoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? I worked yeah. there three years, and they fired me because of my tattoos. But it's, it's probably the best thing that happened because yeah, really. <laughs> at that time I was like just doing. You know the beats and like making little mixtapes where I was rapping half ass. Right. And um, I got fired, and and that's when he came up to me and he, you know, he was like trying to convince me to rap. I didn't want to rap. I was, uh-huh. I fucking hated. But I were thought, you already rapping on his beats? No, I couldn't. I couldn't rap. Like I was just like dabbling at the time, uh-huh. and I didn't want to do it by myself. That's why I, I saw something in him, and I wanted him to do it with me. That way, I wouldn't be like alone. So, right. You know, because it takes a lot of confidence to really not does. only make a beat, but also to rap on it and then put it out and not show even people. That dude, like the first time I even performed music, especially ever, people you know, know. I was thirteen playing drums in a band, and like I remember the singer like counting off like one, two, three, four and I was like just ready to throw up. Yeah. And that's, just, that's sitting behind a drum set. Yeah. So yeah. imagine like with the microphone all these people yeah, looking no at shit. you and you, you know, you could say something really stupid or say something really, I don't know. It's it's nerve wracking sometimes. But we kind of got, we got to that point, you know, he talked me into doing it and all that and we just got to that point to where like we were like, fuck it, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're not getting any younger. Like, if we're going to do this shit, like... Yeah, do it now. I, I haven't had a job since I got fired. I haven't right. had a fucking job. Now, I'm, I'm but not Is that because good. you were selling a bunch of drugs your entire life or since, since nah, you quit your just, job? He just, like, decided... Like, when we decided this is what we're going to do, he got fired or whatever, and he just, like, just stayed at home and, like, made beats. Just, like, kept making beats. Took care of, like, what he needed to do at home. Like, you know, taking rides with his brothers and shit like that. But yeah. And that, that's the crazy shit is that if you want to make it as a rapper in music, you have to go into this nerd stage. Dude, really it's do. literally yeah. like a understand. full-time job, that's what they don't bro. understand. Like, it's such a gamble, too. Especially if you, like, end up leaving or quitting your job and you're just doing that shit full-time. You're not even, like, having any sort of intention of getting another job. To get yeah, to where we've gotten to in a year, risky. which is, like... You know, it, it's it's crazy, but I mean, we've put in a lot of work, no, we, man. Like he I, he works. I but, used to, like, and people slime. think glamorous work like on tour. No, no it's like no, sitting no. in the basement, no. fucking watching it's, YouTube tutorials yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's yeah, how bro. I learned how to do Final Cut. That's how he learned how to do Garage Band. Was watching yeah. YouTube tutorials. Yeah, 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 all self-taught. Yeah. So, and then after that, man, we was like, if you know, we're either gonna make this happen or we aren't. We're not gonna eat. Period. Right. You know. Actually, what we said was we're gonna make this happen. Or we're gonna kill ourselves. Yeah. That's what we said. Once you make it, you're gonna kill no, yourself. No, no, no. If, we if you didn't, yeah. I mean, if this didn't happen, I don't want boys didn't. I don't want to work a nine to five job. Yeah, I've done. I've slang pizzas off, before. Like, fuck that. I don't want to do yeah. that shit. Like, it's a dark it, life. You know, it really is. I don't. I don't plan on it. Not working. Not to bring negative energy or have a plan B. But like. You know, it's do or say, die. It's do or die. Right, right. right. If it didn't happen, I'd, right. I'd blow my fucking no plan head off. B. I mean, you know, because I don't want to live my life going through the same shit every day to work. I'm not doing that. To work like eight hours a day just to yeah, go home. Tough. Just, just because like I've worked the nine to five, like I said, shit, and eight hours through the day. You're like, damn. Shit, try ten hours, twelve hours. <laughs>
Nah, eight hours is still tough, especially depending on what you're doing. I just want to go home and fucking sit down and watch TV. Right. And that's not very... Because it sucks every ounce of energy. Right. Oh, my that's God. Not a great, yeah, bro. That's not a good thing to think. Like, all I want to do is go home and watch TV. Right. Like, fuck. And that's... Real, no, fuck that. Like, literally the worst thing that you can imagine is being in jail. But working eight hours of a day doing something much, that you don't like is damn close to it. It's damn close to it. Because yeah. you're going to go home. It's not like you have eight hours you sleep, eight hours you work, and then eight hours you can do whatever you want. That's the ideal, and that's kind of what you need to do if you want to fucking make it or whatever, is you have to find time and your spare time to work on your passion or whatever right. but at the same time i mean that shit if you're even just sitting there like you were saying that you're selling furniture or whatever it's right. fucking mentally draining Absolutely, like it drains man. you of your it's fucking like, creativity this, and i started getting to the point where i'm looking forward to like moving up in the company and shit you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> yeah like oh, i'll be a manager one day I'll, right and, that's, you know, and, I'll be, and then you're stuck it takes away from you as a person as well you become like just this like, I became a when zombie, you see a bro. fedex guy do you wonder like what that guy is like no you don't it's just some guy delivering a package and, right. I, and that's how i felt even when i was a little kid when i was 15 16 working at the grocery store and i had that fucking apron on and I would be looking down at myself because I always had like a real strong sense of like I need to be doing something that matters that I care about blah blah right, blah right. and mm -hmm. then I'd look down at myself and I'd be like I am a fucking drone right now right. thing about 9 to 5 is you gotta find something that's mentally stimulating you know what I'm saying like if you're if you're just working like a extremely monotonous job, you know what I'm saying like over time that's just gonna like just really get to hired you. To, right. to act like something right. I'm not, and exactly. to, and that's how I appeal to everybody else, you, and that's how I feel. What did you do? I care about just doing the grocery store shit. I sold women's shoes at Sears when I was like 17. Uh, I, all kinds of bullshit. How did, how how did on that? some shit come about? Like when when was your point where you were like, "Fuck this shit, I'm about to do it." Well, yeah, this is good because the no jumper audience definitely probably don't know about this. But when I was like, so I was selling drugs and doing credit card scams and fucking playing Holy online. Shit. Poker when I was like pretty much since I was like 18 to like 22. And then at one point when I was playing online poker all the time, I was always looking at this one rap blog and I was always looking at, um, a, a BMX like message board like a forum and it just hit me in the head. I was like, yo, I could run a blog exactly like yep. this rap blog, but do it about BMX. Yep. You know, a year later, I was making enough money that I could quit my fucking poker scheme and I stopped selling drugs That's and doing all this awesome, bullshit. Bro. And then OSS oh, was yeah. more like, I realized right away, like, oh, that's going to be a media company. Like, I'm going to make money through advertising right, on that. Right. And I, but that's not good enough. Like, I want to have my own brand that represents me and my friends and right. what we're into. And I, I can't fucking put fucked up images and shit on a, a, an advertising-based blog's clothing or whatever. Right. I wanted to make clothes, and I wanted to do stuff with my friends right. like that. It's crazy how you kind of, like, changed over the years, though, because... <laughs> I think he really damaged No Jumper's reputation by getting into adult filming and shit yeah, like know. that. And so for now to be at this point where I have a store and shit is just like mind blowing. Straight up like mental like fucking willpower to like. It's not like it was separate either. Like whenever whenever he first started, like he was literally doing that on the No Jumper podcast. He's like, oh, you want to see the rest of this? Go on Patreon for five dollars. Just envision shit and right. just keep working yeah, until man. you get Plus, there. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Like, like we're very heavy into that, like speaking it into existence, so like real. energy. So is Jay. Yeah, so, like yeah. the universe, shit like that. You know, Law I was just listening man. to a fucking Nick Cannon interview on Combat Jack, and he said the exact same thing about why he's successful. He's like, you know, I sp I spoke these things into existence. It's I swear, true. To, no, Nick Cannon, not that, not that bad actually seemed kind of cool from this interview bro when me and him got together and we said that shit like okay we're about to do this or we're not about to eat like we both at that time had really gotten into the whole law of attraction sh and the secret and you know and what shit like, like that. whenever we do sometimes we everybody has negative moments yeah like, absolutely whenever we do or like he'll get stuck in a funk and he's just like right. you know surrounded by negative energy you know, negative things start to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. It just seems like things just start falling apart, but that's because you have like this negative visor above your eyes and you're looking at all the negative shit. Right. Yeah. You can find the silver lining in everything. You can't. Right. Dude, we're all getting hyped up on this conversation. People are going to think that we're snorting Adderall and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I was just getting hyped up. I'm yeah, like, yo, this is such a good yeah. combo. Yo, but I mean, that's for real, dude. Like, yeah, that's really what's is, good though. about really me is. and him being like a, a, a group you know rather than individuals is like we can check if i'm other, in a funk right. you know he can pull me out of it if he's in a funk i can pull him he's out like of the it. only person like there'd be several times where like he can sense when there's like something wrong uh -huh. with me you know what i'm saying and he'll we'll talk about it and shit like it's so good to have somebody else to bounce ideas off because like, i was gonna say it's good to have that connection anyways because i mean you know what like it's, it's really difficult to do a shit like this on your own that's you when know? things really changed for me with the business is when i got my friend alfredo like started working with him all the time because he's a super like motivated driven person and then all of a and sudden that's what you need bro. yeah because i'm more of like an artist like creative type where right. i have ideas and like i want to create content and stuff and he's more like he'll sit in front of the computer and do the fucking taxes and he that's, does not mind wow like, i'm you and he's alfredo yeah, that's, okay that's, that's insane <laughs> that's what's yeah, up yeah, but, yeah, but wow. that was good because then i started like all these ideas that i had that i would come up with and t I, all of a sudden i had somebody to talk to about them with and just be able to be like yo like 
put the idea in his head and all of a sudden it's not just this thing in my head it's an email and if we fuck up then it, if we don't do anything then I, I would feel like oh at least i bounced it off somebody and worked on it you know right, that's right, important right, because right. if it's just shit floating around in your head it's a pretty good chance that a lot of it's not going to happen right. you know? absolutely right. absolutely what is your creative process with music these days i mean i'm skipping ahead like crazy but no, that's cool yeah like what is like how often do you guys hold up okay. in the studio what is, what is the uh, process like i still work a job so okay. four days out of the week i'm working a job and then what kind of job uh, I was, where, wait, wait, am I tripping? Is he talking about now or before? Yo, like, can my keyboard work? I work a job. So okay. four days out of the week, I'm working a job and then. What? Not going to happen. Right. Now. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. What is your creative process with music these days? I mean, I'm skipping ahead like crazy, but no, that's cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, what is, said these like days. how often do you guys hold up okay. in the studio? What is, what is uh, the process like? I still work a job. So okay. four you still days work? out of the week, He's I'm still working a job. And then, what kind of job? Uh, I was I've worked in a restaurant my whole life. Okay, doing like all sorts of shit. Do you, do you find it like draining and shitty, of or is course, it kind of? Yeah. Oh man, so he'll call me in the middle of his shift and, and be like, like, "Dude, this. I'm, I'm just so, so done ready." With this fucking shit, but yeah. the money's not there. Like, I'm, we're still broke, so don't think yeah, that we're, we're like flexing. Yeah, 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 bro. Was even after all them performances I've seen with uh between them and Poya and all that shit, all those little concerts and shit. We don't flex for a reason because we we don't have shit. So. Yeah, man. But I mean, to get back to your question, like. I, I say like three days out the week, you it's know, confusing. he'll come up and I mean, literally. He lives an hour away from me. Oh, okay. So I drive up there, yeah. spend three days, I sleep there all three nights. And we'll nights just pound it. Like whether it's a video, whether it's a new t-shirt design, whether it's a song, we have to get something get done. Everything. Those and do you have a plan when you meet up usually or yeah. is it more like you... We're, you, su we're super planned. I'm still thinking about um, them saying they're broke as shit. One thing this could be is that they recorded this podcast like really, really early on, like way before they released it. That's the only thing I can really think of because, like I said, like I've seen all those performances and stuff like that, you know? Planned out. Okay. Uh, unless you should make a decent amount of money like, for, for like releases track. and shit. For releases and shit, like what we're going to do, we're planned out. But as right. far as like music goes, we just go with the flow. You want, I, I heard something. I, I keep bringing up Future, but yo, this this is something that motivated me. I never said it on the podcast, but I was listening to an interview with Future about how, you know, his first album did real good and then his second album didn't do as good, honest. And that was the one that the critics didn't like as much and shit. I didn't like it. Yeah, I, same way. There, there was some heaters on it, but it was kind of a weird right. album. And then he was talking on this interview about what, what went wrong. And he's like, yo, I got married. Like, all of a sudden, he's like, I used to be a person that was just in the studio. He's like, I never did a Christmas dinner. Like, I was in the right. studio working right. all the time. Dude, we have no friends. Right. And, have, yeah. and I was just, and he's like, he's the type of person that, like, he realized that having a family, having all this bullshit around him, that being a celebrity, blah, 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 it was just taking him out of his fucking creative That's space energy, where bro. he needed to be. Like, it took him away from the thing that made him great in the right. first place. Right. And that is what I sometimes even, like, miss because of the fact I'm so busy. It's just having that ability to sit in your fucking room and just work on shit all right. the time and just right. let your creativity go crazy and yeah. go in different directions, you know? Absolutely. But think, Absolutely. Like, in New Orleans, you kind of get started young on a social life. So right. I kind of been there, done that as far as going out. So... I'm, I, we told each other we're not going to go out unless like we have like this money and like you know we want to fucking go same out, you know man I was in the DJ scene like always partying in right. high school and shit and like I said after that I was in the DJ scene heavy and shit like that so like the whole even even being on tour like the whole like after parties or like right you know, fucking with bitches or something like that. Because yeah, partying not, is the number one thing dude, besides a job that is just gonna. I'm not fuck worried you about up. any yeah. of that, yeah. bro. Like, you it's know a waste of time and money, dude. It really is. Like, yeah. unless you got something going I'm on at the same time, you know what I mean. But if you're just like working a nine to five job and you spend your weekends partying, getting fucked up, like. How far? How long is that going to last? Right, because you know I mean, if if you could account for like, oh, almost every night I'm going out from fucking 10 p.m. to two in the morning, and I'm getting drunk, and then in the morning I'm feeling like shit, and so I'm working on that, and like that is all time that you could be sitting in your fucking room working, you know, like trying right. to figure out right. what you're going to do with your passion. You it kind of, like, it kind of. I mean, the situation that sacrifices everything. Sacrifice. That's the thing. Yeah, nobody wants to sacrifice shit. Mm -hmm. Like the the thing about it is, it kind of works out. Um, Oh, yeah, you might want to blow it. Yeah, you blow it. Whoa, look at this. We're going to fire. Let's <laughs> throw a whole ass blow fire. It. Just burn the whole place down. Fuck it. Blow it, bro. Blow that money like a candle. <laughs> but the thing, the thing that uh, still works out with me and Ruby is, yeah, he works his job. And, you know, talking about being able to have that time to have that whole creative process. I got my responsibilities, too. Right. But um, 
while he's working those days he's not up he's banging um, out beats yeah I'm able to bang out the beats uh-huh. and like get the projects ready and shit like that that way when he comes up we're ready to you go know, we that's just a different kind of studio. energy for you too though I think because then like you have something that you're still really struggling against that like yeah. having that time to be in there getting angry at it's, fucking your boss believe, and, no, it, definitely, get, it definitely. gets him in the funk man right. believe me I mean if but I also use it as motivation to like right. help me get myself out of this fucking situation yeah. right because in a year or two or whenever it happens I mean it's just going to feel even better that you like right. kept struggling Bro, we're, we're, we're hungry as fuck. I mean, to be at the Seth Shiloh Waterboy show, uh, nice you know, year. a year ago, shout out to L and M. Yeah. Um, you know, we were able to do fuck a hoe with Smurf. I mean, uh-huh. we had a thousand followers. We were like shit. That. You know, see, I remember <laughs> this, and I remember seeing you guys, and I remember wondering because then we I came th- here, bro. We came, oh, you did come we here. Came here. Oh, okay, but we came okay. here with Eddie. You know, right. and, I wonder if that's that clip that I put on the very first, uh, not the first, but like the uh, the first. Uh, get yourself sagas that video that I did a thousand followers you were shit. that's what they're talking you know, about see, I remember this and I remember seeing you guys and I remember wondering because then we I th- came here bro we came, oh you did come we here you weren't here oh, okay, but we came okay. here with Eddie you know right. and, uh, and, and yeah. visited you had a thousand shit, followers on what SoundCloud because you got 50k right. now that's pretty strong yeah. Right? yeah over the year it just blew up and yeah. I mean I, I, I attribute that to us you know working as hard as we've been working right. but um you know, I'd be lying if I, I didn't say that, you know, Puya right. and what he's, he's done. He's the one that really Smurf, helped. Huh? Smurf helped us out, too. Smurf, too, yes. Smurf, Smurf was the first sure. person to, Smurf. like, reach down to okay, us. Okay, so how'd you meet him? All right, well, we we were working on a song called Fuck a Ho, and it was a DJ, was it DJ I remember. I remember specifically. I remember. Her. It was somebody, somebody made a tweet, and it included us and Black Smurf in it, maybe about collabing on a song or something, but I seen he had favored it. Right. So, and you were already a fan or you knew yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I messaged him and I was like, yo, you know, we got this track. Can I send it to you? You want to do it? He's like, yeah, send it through. So I sent it to him. Yeah, he didn't dope. charge us. Mm-hmm. He didn't do anything like that. That's he loved so. the track. Shout out to Smurf. He's a good guy. Yeah. Man, he's, out, he's a great guy, bro. He's the, he's and fan. he sent it back. I just imagined him hitting them back to my, yeah, that'll be $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> that's how a lot of these like unknown ass rappers be doing now. I mean I'm not saying he was unknown but to us you know we were super stoked <laughs> it's ridiculous. About that. put the track out and then we hit him up and we were like hey you want to do a video like we'll drive to Memphis and, and, and do a video with you and then you know Smurf was like nobody does that exactly you know what I'm like, off that alone he was like nobody's ever hit me up to do shit in real life y'all are the first really? people yeah. so that's why so he like, really fucked with us that goes a long way for it sure really does. Like I, the, yeah. that connection is different and then the after DM that combo, that's when he you know? contacted us and was like yo y'all want to ride with me to Sesh Hollow Waterboy show and you know we'll do fuck a hoe yeah. and he gave us that opportunity to you know touch the stage and do that song with him and then you know, uh, and we saw we saw like we were sitting in that show. Nobody knew who the fuck I was. Nobody was telling me what's up. Oh yeah, they didn't know who the fuck we were. And I just got, I remember hating that feeling, being like, man, I don't want to be this guy in the background. This. You know right. what I'm saying? You want to prove yourself? Yeah, fuck this. Like I can do this. Another shit hunger too. thing, you know. Right. And it was just to see like Zay and and Bones and Chris just to see and the crowd and screaming their lyrics back at him. I was like, and fuck seeing how far yeah. they made Super it in a short yeah. period bro. of time. Super. Even Definitely. to see Jay and Smurf and all of them on stage. The first time he saw Jay, he was like, "What the fuck does Jay Green?" Because you gotta say, I've been listening to Jay since like 2008. Oh, I've really? been knowing okay. about Jay for a long time. Yeah, he been around that like long. Coding Dreams and all that shit. And he was on Traps and Trunks yeah. and all this shit. So I've been fucking with Jay for a long time. Introduce yourself, Jay. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> OJ, OJ Green. Yo, 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 Jay Green. Jay Green. Yo, how did, all right, so how did how did Puya find out about you guys or how did they start showing nah, up? Apparently, like, I don't know. Apparently he just liked our music. We found out because he commented on one of our videos Saying like this is fire, right. and they said like Puya, and we thought it was just bullshit. We're like, all right, what the fuck? Yeah, and then yeah. I saw the YouTube channel was Buffet Boys, and I was like, wait, what the fuck? Is he really like our? And then stuff? he made a tweet. Yeah, then he said something about Suicide Boys, and he did too. He had so tweeted, did Jay. yeah. So we were like, oh shit. Then he had hit us up and like, yo, I really fuck with your stuff. Like, you want to do a song together? And that's how we did South Southside Suicide. I sent him like I want songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't want it. I didn't want it to just be like. You know, some track where we had an open verse and it's just like right. put a verse on. We want it to be fly like, as fuck. Whenever like. we make music with people, we like truly envision what we can see them on and like try to make a good product. <laughs> How'd that go with Slow Christ and uh, and Curve? We're not trying to ride nobody. It's like, yeah, you know, we we need to make this collab, but uh, 
<laughs> How in the world are we going to get them on this track? Cocktail or anything yeah. like that. Like, to put on. We just want to make some great music. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I enjoy your music. Let's make music together. Like, see what And we'll that's see how Southside Suicide came yeah, but out. But so how did it go from being one song to being a, a whole little well, mini tape? Well, I got that. I got that. Right, I got go that. ahead. Go ahead. I sent, him, I, I sent him three tracks to choose from. He liked them he all. He hit me back instantly. It was like, let me do all of them. And I'm like, I can't do that, bro. That's like, for our tape, we're about to drop High Tide and the Snake's Nest. And um, and he was like, word, okay. And I was like, well, pick one. And he <laughs> picked Southside Suicide. And then from there, you know, he was like, Let, let's do a fucking EP together, you know? And, and so then, when he said that, you were probably like really fucking shocked, right? Because I was telling my fucking a big dad, ass fan, bro. And, and, <laughs> and my trying to explain him, showing him like, pictures of Puyo yeah, on Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dad, yeah, but and he, be honest, he don't know who the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Jerry, I'm sorry for talking about your dad like this in front of you. It must be kind of <laughs> awkward for you. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, look, like, uh, Krez was telling me that Puya jammed us the whole time on tour, which is still hard for me to believe. That's that, like, crazy, yeah. I still get, have a hard time believing that people actually fuck with my music because like, for so long in the punk scene, I just got shit on for like 10 years. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? Just trying my hardest and yeah. nobody liked it. So now people like actually fuck with my music. I'm just like, what? Especially like my friends. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is weird. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I saw you guys tweet at one point. You said something like, there's not a lot of people in the rap game that'll just that'll work with somebody below them to no, help them out man. without getting a reward or like especially today and, and that's whatever. evident you can you can look at everything man and and nobody does that nobody reaches below exactly them. yeah unless and, they have a financial incentive to right, do it right, like they right, sign the right. dude or they're getting some money and from Puya, it or whatever Puya genuinely like liked our stuff and he reached down to us and man like i can't i can't thank him enough mm-hmm. for you know for for what he's done and fucking with us you no, know definitely but i think the reason why that doesn't happen so much is because people are afraid that, especially in the rap game, that you put somebody on, right. it's it can not only surpass, but they can turn into your enemy. True, true. You, you power fight. them up, and look then at, they can turn. Look at Lil yeah. Wayne and Birdman. Like, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that's why that doesn't happen so much. Is there's a lot of snakes in the industry. The yeah. thin line between love and hate for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. And one little thing absolutely. goes wrong, and all of a sudden it's all thrown away. Right. Yeah. And that's like. Um, so, so you de- you describe that as like the biggest thing that happened in terms of you guys like really starting to get your what, follow your, your fan base up. Yeah, yeah definitely, absolutely, definitely, absolutely, for man. sure, nice. absolutely. He he opened up like this whole audience for us, and like a lot of people found out about us through that one song with Puyo. Like, right, right. So shout out Puyo, love you. I'm gonna give you a big hug when I meet you for the <laughs> yeah. first time. We still have, still haven't met him, yeah. but he's, he's supposed to come here, yeah, right? All right, look, we just met Ramirez, who's okay. part of G Five. So wait. I'm trying to figure out because I'm Southside Suicide came out way before this, so it's like they still haven't met him. So whether they just like not make that video until way later, that one that's got all of them. Oh, in nine. It? Yeah, we just met him in person like a week ago. Jay, I met last year, but now we've been chilling for like the last week. Ghost, I met through Smurf, just tagging along on tour, and I just met Jerm like. Or if that, for it, I probably had that messed up earlier. Whenever I said I was wondering how they were still broken shit. So if they made that Puya, that uh, that Triple Cash sign music video like way after this. That would make a little more sense. Maybe if they went on and do some performances and shit and then finally got their money up and then finally did those videos with Puya. Nick, Crazy. Yeah, Nick, yeah. Dude, they're all just like, man, the most genuine, sincere guys <laughs> yeah. I've, I've met, man. You know, I hit Nick up. Nick's never seen me before in person in my life. Right. You know, he hasn't been working with us like Puya, but it's like, Puya, hey, I'm like LA, saying Puya. you know, we need a place to crash. We're broke. And Nick just fucking not even blinked an eye. Like, yeah. yeah, no hesitation. There's like bro, six of us I mean. sleeping on his floor. Like he doesn't. And he just got that place like two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Man, they're, they're all great, man. Yeah, I mean, right. Germ, uh, I, 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 I can't sing their praises enough, bro, because they're really good, genuine people, bro. Dude, really. that's amazing. That's that's really good to hear. Like, you know, nice, kind-hearted stories. Hey, all the kids out there, if you're an aspiring rapper, hit up Puya, hit up Nick. They'll let you stay at their house. Yeah. All of you. <laughs> Every single last yeah. one of you. I have his number if you guys want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll put the, Puya's phone number on the screen right here. Five, five, five. <laughs> don't, don't call after midnight, depending on what time zone you're in. It'll, it'll be fine. Hey, so um, what probably a lot of people want to know is, like, how did you develop your aesthetic in terms of musically? Like, you guys have a very unique sound. You guys are dark. The videos are dark. What influenced you to, to um, become like that? You to think? be honest, first. like, all right, I, I've always been into like depressing ass music. I'm naturally just a depressed person. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't wake up every day like, oh wow, what a what a new day. I have to like convince myself. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not a be gimmick, that bad. man. He's it's, he's it's not with a gimmick. Depression. People think like, oh, fucking edgy, cringy, like gimmicky. Like, no, fuck y'all. Whoever saying that, like, <laughs> this is like what I rap about is like the I'll shit that, that I go through. <laughs> and like, even before rap, the make the music I was making was, you know, just emotional shit, like what I was going through, what I'm feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's it for me, I guess. I mean, the whole the whole like Suicide Boys came about from 
um, we started. We were we were doing solo stuff. Like Adi had a mixtape out called Pluto. Uh huh. God, um, tell him about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking of future here, I'll react to that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't listen to Future at the time, but oh, okay. we were we were doing uh, solo stuff. But we're still G five nine. You know, we would like, do like his release would be like in April. Then we would work on my stuff the next month. And then we would focus on him next. And then we realized that was kind of stupid. Well, we we did some songs together, man. And, and it was they flame. were just yeah, they were real strong. Smoker sack. That's the first song we then, ever did together. Then when we were apart, so. And then, uh, I, how did the name come about? Yeah, that's uh, what I... Remind me. The suicide thing? Well, all right. We were going to do like... Was guess, it my ex or you came up well, with we it? Well, were, we were doing two separate things, like you said. And we were going to do like, hey, why don't we do like all these like trill, like screwed up beats and call uh, the EP Trill Clinton and it would be both of us. And like a uh -huh. bunch of Texas sound started, and shit. Right. Then he started making a bunch of horror shit and we're like, damn, let's do another one on a different tip Black and call suede. that Black Suede. Okay. So we were, kept coming up with all these little projects but we were still two separate people, so eventually we just said, fuck it, and he had a song called Suicide, and that song was doing like really good numbers, so we just started calling each other Suicide Boys. Yeah. So yeah. it was not a reference to the Suicide Girls? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I actually it's... played a punk show with the Suicide Girls stripping, which was kind of tight, but no. Never no. heard of that. Dude, the whole yeah. shitty part, I mean, the whole shitty part about it was like, I didn't know about the I Suicide Boys. I didn't even put two, two, two <laughs> I knew about Suicide well, like, Boys. because that shit is fucking played out now. Nobody, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Who, Nobody cares. They, they interviewed me. I, mean, they, I went on the Suicide Girls podcast. No shit. Oh, did it was you? Not great. Yeah. <laughs> you can Google it. It's out there. I knew about Suicide Boys, I but will. I didn't like put two and two together. But, but I mean, yeah. People it, will tag us as like Suicide Boys official, which is the actual oh, Suicide yeah, Boys page. Worse, man. Okay. So they'll go to that and it's a bunch of like naked dudes with tattoos. Uh, Y'all are telling me there's another Suicide Boys out there. That's oh, crazy. wow. But, I never even thought about that, that there is a real Suicide there is, Boys. Oh, yeah. okay. the, whole, and, the whole way. And so, you know, the Suicide Boys thing came together. And, you know, we realized we were out. We used to be out locally, like handing out CDs, doing, doing that whole thing. And then it, it took a lot of trial and error before we realized, like, you know, this whole internet rap thing that was going on and the power of the internet and that right. SoundCloud had at the time. So we just started, like, utilizing that, you know, and, and, and you so, know, just, I mean, we would go, uh, just to be completely honest, we'd go and just, like, follow the max limit. Right. Of people that we we could follow We've all to, been there. to get them, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we started out just like you know. Well, but it really didn't hit home for me until somebody told me that locally we we were trying to push the local shit. We're like, we'll conquer New Orleans first, then mm -hmm. we'll go to Baton Rouge, conquer that, and we'll conquer Louisiana, right. then right. we'll do the southeast and the whole country. But somebody told me that's stupid because locally that's the last place you're gonna get put on. Right, like people aren't gonna fuck with you locally until like until your shit. Bro, bro. That's looking so And you it's know true. What I'm saying? They to this know day, you. we don't know in New Orleans if anybody even knows who we are. Yeah, like, so that's what I was gonna say. Like if you play, a that's how it is where I'm at. I'm in uh, Indianapolis right now, and when I was producing and shit like that, nobody locally was like fucking with me. Like no matter what, I was trying to reach out to like artists and shit. Nobody would ever hit me up back. The second I started hitting up people like outside the state, you know what I'm saying? Like in other states and shit like that, I was easily able to network. The show in New Orleans. We haven't. We, think, haven't yet. we think now the based on the response from Twitter. We might get, yeah. a, might get a crowd. But we, like, maybe we, played like one a show, show. we played one show in New Orleans like a year ago. Remember that? The one we won the contest money? Yeah, it was yeah, a yeah, stupid yeah. contest thing, won like a thousand bucks. Was it like a freestyle contest or something? No, it was like nah, an nah, open nah, mic nah. thing. We see we took the whole like punk element to it and like we were just like hopping around like just going ape shit. Yeah, so like yeah. we won that shit like no but contest. The whole like aesthetic thing is like, you know, Adi really does suffer, you know, with depression and shit like that. I'm uh I mean I'm a real life junkie, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, you too, you do a lot of pills and shit? Uh he takes the cake with that shit. I mean, so you I'll, fuck around with it a little bit? I dabble, yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, I fuck around. He's very good at being rec He's very well, good see, at I, recreationally yes. doing it. Okay. I have. I mean, everybody slips sometimes. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Even including myself. You know, sometimes you realize like, whoa, shit, I need to chill out on this. Right. But I try to check myself first. So I don't I can have help that check off him. button. He doesn't have that off button, so I got to be there for him and like support him as My well. My frontal lobe is just gone after years. Like so he said, really? he's been doing this for like more yeah. than ten years. So like, I have to. I, I helped him get off. I don't fucking say heroin. Yeah. I have to get off the run. So well, heroin. What was that like? And for how many years did you do that? Well, years. that was that was like okay. After my job had stopped, um, you know, I he had no reason not to. I like, had, I had tried. Insane. I had I I had tried getting off of like you know the roxies and oxies and all that shit, and I made it about twenty days. And then, you know, I, it was another day. I didn't get no sleep. Because, you know, when you go through those withdrawals, bro, right. you don't get any sleep, man. Right. So, I mean, I was like 20 days up, just like going out of my mind. So, you know, it was 
I remember that morning, 7 o'clock, I was like, you know what, fuck this. Like, if this is being sober, I don't fucking want it, and I don't care for it. And I went out, and I got some Roxy's, and I was able to do that for a couple of weeks, but they started cracking down on pills. I don't know if anybody remembers. I remember when, when they, they fucked up the, the, the coding on the yeah. Oxys. Yeah, 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 they started yeah. fucking around. So I knew I'm going to sound like a junkie too because I know that. <laughs> but everybody, I knew everybody was going to start moving to H, and sure enough, that's what started. It's always, it's always where I'm from. Stronger. Everybody where are you dying from? from like Boston area, like yeah. in New Hampshire, oh, yes. in New England. Yes. Yo. Just the other day, a kid I walked to school with died of fucking heroin overdose yeah, all the time. Like, literally 20 people like my age that have died of overdosing. Yeah, There's I got a, a huge heroin problem in New Orleans. Right. But huge heroin problem. I, Shout out to BG. I, I, Shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I moved up. You know, of course, I mean, you can't get your pills, bro. You got to do something. So. Right. It's easier. It's, it's easier to get. Stronger, right? Right? I got that. And, you know, I, I, I started snorting it. And everything, I'm, I'm what you call a function addict. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, I'll be able to, I'm not going to be ducked out, passed out somewhere. Ignoring calls and shit. I'm, I'm, I can function. So we're doing our thing, and I'm I'm doing wrong, you know. I'm snorting it and all that, but it got bad when it got to the point where I had to start shooting it up because I wasn't feeling. My friend was like, "Dude, just shoot it up. It lasts longer." Blah blah blah. So it got to that point, and I mean, I mean, shit, man. First time you shoot heroin up, you know what I'm saying? I refer to it as like talking to God, you know. It's that it's, crazy. I mean, it's it's I, I can't explain it, you know. Besides, getting a morphine drip at the hospital, right? You know what I'm saying? But you can barely remember that shit, but. Um, yeah, I started shooting up, man. It got to a point where I was shooting up like five times a day. And I, I wasn't doing music anymore. You know, I was just like, I became a hermit. Like, the only time I would leave the house is to go meet my friend by the gas station, buy a gram a day, which was like 200 bucks. Have him shoot 200 me up. 200 a day? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, have him crazy. shoot me up because I couldn't do it myself. Really? Go home and duck out. And, you know, it got to the point where he was like, Yo, bro, like, if you don't quit this shit, we can't, you know, we can't I'm not do, gonna this. do this shit. Right, so right. what do you have to do to, to help him? Um, he just really, he gave just, me my like, space and, and supported look, me. Look, the thing that I told him is that I, I'm never going to judge you for it. Yeah. I will say, uh, I remember some of y'all in the comments talking about Ruby was saying, um, I thought it was, if I remember correctly, I thought it was around like 2018 where he was saying that uh, he might fuck around and like split up Suicide Boys or where y'all talking about this right here. This is way I'm earlier. Like mad at you for like slipping up. I just don't want you to lie to me. Right. right. You know what I mean? You can slip up. I'm not going to be like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, you junkie. I'm never going to do that to you. I'm not going to judge you. Everybody does what they do. And I've lied to him a lot, but it's, it, we're well, lying. there was a point it's where hard. he was lying to me. And then I told him like, look, if you, if you, we cross this bridge one more time and you lie to me again, like I straight up and done with suicide boys. Right. I'll do my own fucking thing. Like that's it. I'm done. I get you your chances. It's hard though, bro. When you're, when you're an addict and you're in that position, right. you know, people say, oh, just be up front with me. But that's, that's very he hard. Would, he it's would very cry, hard. Up. He yeah. would cry. Like, it's very hard. Because at one point I was like, well, I'm your fucking cousin. You've known me for life. Why can't you just be honest with me? And he would cry being like, because even though. I don't want to hurt him. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't want to disappoint want, him. Exactly. When did you When did you feel like you actually were safe and you weren't going to be doing H anymore? He, well, he went through like, I, me and his dad kind of made him like sit on the couch and just go through the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like just go through the withdrawals and then mm -hmm. he got on the Suboxone, which helped a lot. Okay. So that's like the so it's kind of like, like a methadone, methadone. right? But it's it a newer, your, a newer version, opiate blocker. Um, and it, it just do H, he would not feel it if he was on Suboxone. Right, right, right. 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 And it, it it keeps you from feeling like shit. Like all those chemicals that are so unbalanced in your brain now, because of that, it takes away the cravings. You know, just because when you come off of that shit, man, you just feel empty. You feel like right. something's missing. I mean, it's. It's very hard to describe to someone if they haven't if they haven't been through it. You know what right. I'm saying? And I've been through outpatient rehabs. I've been through a bunch of stuff. And the only time I've I've seemed to be good and steady is when I'm on a maintenance like uh -huh. Suboxone. Because I've even tried getting off Suboxone. And I mean, granted, the rehab did it wrong when they tapered me. They tapered me way too quick. It was really uh -oh. fast. So y'all must have been referring to um, what is it? Inpatient rehab. Whenever y'all are talking about he was going to rehab a little bit later on, since this is like 2015, you say he's been going to outpatient rehab. I might have to find out a little more about I had, that. I was like, what, like a month? Tremors. Yeah, they tapered me down within a month. And, I, you know, I was having tremors and shaking and all that shit again. Really? But, you know, one day, yeah, I do hope. You, know, you aspire I, to one day be able to like, leave all the Absolutely. I don't behind. want the kids or anybody that looks up to us. To think to, that heroin's cool. To, yeah, to think that, like, what I'm talking about is, like, you know, I'm just being, I'm just trying to be as genuine as I can because when I talk about it, yeah, I do have a love for it. Him, right. yeah, him you bragging, know? he's not really bragging.
I mean, it's gonna happen though. You know what I'm saying? Like if y'all put it in the lyrics, you know, people look it up to you. It's gonna happen regardless. You know what I'm he's just accepted I, himself for who he is, and like, I have a love for it. And you can't assume that it won't I, be taken out of context. I do aspire to like one day, fucking, you know, be completely. But we're comfortable off enough, and we don't have to like keep grinding and making music as much as right, right now. But right now, we'll I got shit to, to some do. Fucking nice, uh, I can't afford to be some sick. nice California rehab center. We can get his dick sucked and get off. Right. Of that's right. what I was, I was gonna say though. Is like, do you feel like a like a a struggle in terms of like? On one hand, your music is your art, and you want to talk about what you're going through and what your life is. And on the other hand, you don't want to be talking about some fucked up shit and no. glamorizing it for the kids. Nah, we, because no, my little, said, my little on. brother, honestly, uh, shout out my little brother, Slim, Slim Gucci. Gucci. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's a little up and coming producer. He's part of G Five Nine. He pr he produced our our latest to video have to have or to have not. Thirteen years old. Um, oh shit. He listens to it. He's a big fan of our music. He understands it. You know, he knows. What I'm talking about, where I'm coming from, maybe because he knows me personally. Right. You know what I'm saying? He knows I'm not this like fucking bad guy that's like this, you know, horrible junkie that'll go and steal from you and all this. But were shit. you at that point where you were a piece of shit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shit? Like we used to stick people up, we used to rob them and shit like that. Like we'd post ads on Craigslist, people come by with cash to like Psych. buy an iPad or something. You know, they and come in and, yeah, we just hit a lick, hit a lick. fucking dark the lights out and take what they had. Damn. That's crazy. Mm. Damn. But I'm open with him about that. He knows Yeah, he that, knows everything. You know? Like, and as far as the music shit goes, we told each other, like, we weren't going to hold back. Like, we're going to express everything. And whether people take it the wrong way or not, that's that's on you. Do you yeah. feel like kids do take it the wrong way sometimes? I mean, yeah. I mean, look, I, I had a line in, in Fuck the Population song where I said, burn a cigarette in my wrist. That's that seventh word shit. And now I get Snapchats like all the time, people like burning themselves with cigarettes. Really? And I told him, I was like, look, yeah, do, do it if you want to, but just be careful. Be careful. That's just like, crazy. Yeah, I ain't gonna fucking, lie. You can burn Y'all got to let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> burn yourselves with cigarettes. Y'all got to let me know what the whole entire thing is behind that, because I could not see myself doing that shit. Y'all, like, is, do people do it just because of the pain? Is it like someone cutting yourselves and shit like that, or what? Like, come on, no. Nah. Let's stop doing yeah. that. I mean, I mean, but most of it. Cause basically, and I think I think people like us so much. If I may, I mean, not being egotistical, but because they can relate on us, relate I, to actually, us on such a deep, personal level. Right, because right. what we're talking about is like really deep and strong and shit that grabs you, not just in the bottle, popping clubs or I'm better than you and you ain't shit. Right. Like, we we're on to, some like real. So the the support has been like people being like, dude, if it wasn't for your music, <laughs> like. I wouldn't have gotten through this day. I wouldn't have gotten through this year. I wouldn't have gotten through this. I wouldn't we have used to fear that. that, like, oh, shit, what if, like, somebody actually does kill themselves listening to our music? But we've actually gotten mm -hmm. a lot of the exact opposite reaction. Right. People saying, like, yo, dude, my mom died last week, and y'all dropped that mixtape. It's like, damn, and, like, I'm not alone. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's the good thing, too, is that there's, you know, at least, like, 40 years worth of uh, musicians addicted to heroin making right. music. That uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's plenty of other dudes out there that they could look up to as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here. That's part one. I'm going to go ahead and split this into two different parts. So be on the lookout for the second part.